Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to do some simple loops in Octave. Octave uh, has a quite complete set of different uh, programming uh, options like conditionals, uh, for loops, while loops and different other uh, general programming options. However, for loops are relatively slow in Octave and I didn't want to search for examples that could be replaced by a vectorized operation. So for most mathematical operations and for most function calls, you can write always a vectorized version of an operation instead of writing a for loop in Octave. Of course, there are examples where it is more convenient to use for loops or it is very hard to uh, find a non-loop type of operation, but those examples are usually very specific and complex and are not going to be very uh, useful for beginners. So I searched for what could be a good example of a for loop in Octave, something which is useful and simple. And I decided to do a, a small script that reads a bunch of files from a folder. These files are contain spectra, UVB spectra, that have an X vector and a Y vector. That would be the X vector would be uh, the wavelength and the Y vector would be the absorption. So the for loop will read each file in a certain list. So first, what I do is call this function a dir, which gives me basically the list of all files in my uh, directory, current working directory, which have this extension, that x, because that's the extension I used for uh, the obtaining the files. So file list is a structure. So if I write file list here, it will say it's a structure that has dimensions 818 times 1 and has different fields, name, folder, date, etc. So if I want to see one of the names, I will write file list one dot name. So I will get the field name of the file list structure. And I will get the first element, which is the name of one of the files, actually the first file in the list. If I do the same for two, I will have a different file. This one it has a different numbering. So these were a series of automatically measured UVB spectra. So if I go back to here, I will choose a, up to 120 spectra. And a, what I'm going to do is run this loop. So the loop four will take the variable K, I could choose a different name for this variable, whatever I want, almost. So basically what I'm saying here is for K equal to 1 to the number N spectra, which in this case is 120, in intervals of 2, so I will take numbers 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, etc. until probably 119, do a certain number of operations and then the for loop has to end with an end. It can also in Octave end with N4 but MATLAB doesn't recognize N4 so maybe depending on how much you want to move your files between MATLAB and Octave uh, maybe just use end. So what this loop will do is use the function fopen, which is a, a, basically a C++ function uh, written in Octave, that will take as argument the name field of the file list structure with the uh, order k. So basically, it will take the first name in file list, the third name, etc. k equals 1, 3, 5, etc. So for each one, it will open this file using the function fopen. And then 
it will store a file ID, which is a number that tells Octave uh, basically how to locate the file or, or which file is currently in memory or how to identify in memory the opened file. So then I will call this function text scan will take this file ID. Basically, I tell him which file to read with text scan and I have some formatting options. So in order to see what these formatting options are, I will show you the one of these files, coR39red0003.x. So you will see there are a certain number of uh, basically text information regarding the file and on line 11, the numbers start. So these numbers are separated with a semicolon and use a decimal dot. So if I go back to the function text scan, what I'm saying is that the delimiter that separates the columns is a semicolon. And the number of header lines which should be ignored is 10. And then what I'm saying is that I want the output in this format. Basically what I'm saying here is that the format is two columns of floating point numbers. Floating point numbers are basically decimal numbers in a computer. So there are many different ways of reading files in Octave and in other languages. Um, I had to play around until I found that something which was simple and convenient. So the text scan function is very good for um, reading column data, basically ASCII data from a file. But in order to use it in a complex file that has many sections, it would be a little bit more complicated. So Octave is, as far as I know, uh, not the most convenient regarding uh, file input and output and reading. I think it is much easier to read files and retrieve information in Python, for example. But that's my opinion. So then what I'm calling is this function, fancy plot. It's a function I made that basically calls itself the plot function of Octave, but it has a few options. I'm going to describe this function at another time. What I'm saying is that the data one is basically a, it would be a cell array, is another type of variable that contains the information from the file I wanted, the output of text scan. And what I'm going to plot is the first column and the second column of data one. And the options here that opt that I'm passing to the fancy plot function still doesn't have anything. So I don't, I cannot uh, pass any functions yet. And then this hold on is basically what I'm saying is that don't plot the spectra yet, just make the plot object. And then at the end of the for loop, hold off and uh, plot the data. So basically, if I plot the data here, I have plot uh, basically around uh, 60 different spectra. They look gray, so the spectra are not great, but it doesn't matter, it's just an example. If I plot this part, which is the part I'm interested in, you can see there are different spectra uh, that has been accumulated over a certain uh, amount of time. I could, for example, with a for loop, I could, if I remove the two, what I'm going to say is that k takes the value from 1 to n spectra, which is 120. So now I would have more spectra. But there will be not much of a difference. If I take this part again, I will have more spectra in between. If I choose, for example, 8, I will go I, I will take the first spectrum, the 9th, the 17th, etc. So now, if I plot this, you will see that there are fewer spectra in between. As you can see here, the line width is quite small. So this is because I'm calling a function, I'm not putting a lot of information. 
I could do a more sophisticated function like this one that has a few other options and in here what I did is that I checked that around the 90th spectrum it started to change and then I was taking a step of 3 and the number of spectra, the final spectra will be 170 so basically I'm writing a for loop but instead of putting directly the numbers here I put the names of the variables which I can change the numbers here so this is makes it a little bit more readable there are other options here for example I have these if statements these are conditionals that say if k this double equal sign actually means if k equals the number first spectrum which in this case is 90 plot using this certain color this color will be a shade of red and a line width of 3 else if k uh, basically this condition will tell me if k is amongst the last uh, two or three spectra I will choose this other option and else I will call this fancy plot option again these conditionals I'm not going to discuss them now, it doesn't matter it's just to show that you can do a fancier graph easily with not much code, so if I run this so what I'm doing here is basically already choosing the axis for the figure for the part I'm interested in and I'm saying okay, for the first spectrum painted a dark red the last spectrum painted a dark blue and the other spectrum between make them grey so now it looks a little bit better or at least more clear these spectra are noisy, this is an old experiment it doesn't really matter what this data is but what I wanted to show is that with a simple for loop and don't mind yet the options inside this but with a simple for loop I can read a lot of files and plot a lot of uh, different spectra or other type of information so this I think is a nice application of a for loop which makes sense to use in Octave so I hope that this has been useful if you like this please uh, like and subscribe thank you very much